April Richardson here, owner of DC Sweet Potato Cake and all things in the food industry that allows our community to use food as an opportunity to grow. How many times do you get a lender that actually wants to hear the criticism, write it down, but also start to implement a plan in order to do better? FSC, ask us, what could they do better? These are the relationships that we need. It is a fantastic thing to know that our lending partners are always looking at ways that they can get something right as well. Because if we're all holding ourselves accountable to doing great things, then the relationships grow. Hello, and welcome to Powerful Beyond Measure, made possible by the Bowie Business Innovation Center and FSC First. My name is Shelley Gross Wade, and I am the president and CEO of FSC First. Powerful Beyond Measure is an opportunity for affirmation and reflection. Our panelists, like the business owners featured in the video just played, have tasted success, but their evolution continues. At FSC First, our process of growing is ongoing. We take pride in being responsive and adaptable to the communities we serve. Our products and services are works in progress and are informed by your pathways. Thank you for believing in you and believing in us. Before I introduce our moderator, I would like to acknowledge our partner organization, the Bowie Business Innovation Center, also known as Bowie BIC, who've made this event possible. We are convened at the Bowie BIC, a business accelerator and collaborative workspace located at Bowie State University. The Bowie BIC helps women-owned businesses, technology companies, and government contractors scale up and thrive in Prince George's County. They create a space of inclusion and innovation for local small businesses, and we thank them for their partnership. This event is one of many offerings in the FSC First Capital Matters Technical Assistance Program. Capital Matters is a free community resource that provides small business owners with mentorship, targeted support, and clear pathways to capital. Our Capital Matters program is a component of Level Up, a new technical assistance program created by FSC First and our partners, the Bowie BIC, the Financial Empowerment Center at Prince George's Community College, the Maryland Black Chamber of Commerce, the City of Mount Rainier, Prince George's County Economic Development Corporation, and Seed Spot. Level Up is a program designed to uplift small and minority-owned businesses in our communities. It provides practical, affordable tools and recovery assistance. We know many challenges face small businesses, and we would like to learn more about your top needs as female business owners. Right now, a poll should appear on your screen asking this very question. What is the top need to level up your woman-owned business? Is it financial management training, a CFO for hire, access to capital, access to skilled workforce, or coaching and mentoring? Thank you to those who answered our poll question. I encourage you to learn more about Level Up by visiting our website, www.fscfirst.com level up. Now, it is my esteemed pleasure to introduce Renee Nash, motivation maven and journalist with WHUR 96.3 and HUR Voices on Sirius XM 141. Renee is our moderator for our discussion. Renee's reporting has touched our lives for more than 30 years, but that's just part of her story. Renee is a philanthropist and an advocate, engaging the public in the causes that matter. From radiothons to town hall meetings, breast cancer walks to toy drives, Renee uses her influence to make an impact. Renee is also a breast cancer survivor. She's passionate about women's and children's health, financial literacy, human and political rights. On behalf of the board and staff of FSC First, it is my honor to introduce Renee Nash. It is certainly my honor and pleasure to be here at my alma mater, Bowie State University. Hello, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to moderate today's women's business panel, Powerful Beyond Measure. I am super excited to participate in this event. The women joining us for this event are true change makers. 
We're going to have the hard conversations, talking through the obstacles and plotting practical pathways for success. Their journeys are inspirational and their voices are authentic. Please take their experiences to heart as they can inform your next steps ahead. Our program this evening will be broken into two segments. The first is a moderated panel discussion with our panelists, and the second is an audience-driven Q&A session. So please ask our panelists questions using Zoom's question and answer tool while keeping chat messages in the chat tool. We want to make sure we answer as many of your questions as we can, so go ahead and ask them early. And be sure to upvote questions you'd like to hear discussed by our panelists this evening. Of course, we have assembled quite an esteemed panel of female business leaders. It is my privilege and it is certainly my honor to introduce each of them to you now. First up, we have Adrian Walker. Adrian is the owner and operator of Blue Henry, a certified women's business enterprise or WBE. Adrian, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Renee. I'm happy to be here with this lovely panel. Um, yeah, so I'm the owner of Blue Henry. We're located in Capitol Heights, Maryland, um, and proudly in Prince George's County. Uh, we um, handcraft cocktail garnishes, uh, specializing in dehydrated fruit that are used to just add a, a beautiful touch to your uh, cocktails or mocktails. Um, so happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you, and I can't wait to have one of those garnishes. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Our next panelist this evening is Amber Flynn. Amber is the owner of Healing Practice Counseling. Amber, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I'm just really grateful to be here. I'm a licensed clinical professional therapist in Tacoma Park, and we provide behavioral health services and psychotherapy services for people um, and wellness services for people in the community. Yeah. And in these days and times, we need you desperately. Yeah. I can testify to that. <laughs> also having uh, joining us this evening is Jennifer Ramos. Jennifer is the owner and chief executive officer of Gen Contracting Group. Jennifer, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having us here, Renee. It's an honor to be here uh, with you and these wonderful women entrepreneurs. Uh, my name is Jennifer Ramos, uh, owner at Gen Contracting Group, LLC. We're a commercial and residential remodeling firm. Um, on our commercial side, we do apartment turnovers and office build-outs, um, and we also service general contractors that are larger. Um, on our residential side, we offer um, services to homeowners in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia, uh, kitchen and bathroom modeling, and we're actually expanding here in PG County. Um, we're opening a kitchen, bathroom, uh, tile, and paint showroom in Temple Hills, Maryland, um, near Andrews Air Force base in uh, summer. So we're excited to be here and, and excited to uh, share our wisdom with other women entrepreneurs. Well, we are excited and super glad to have all of you ladies. I'm looking forward to being able to dive into this conversation. So let's start uh, with our first question this evening. What inspired you to launch a business and what impacts did you expect to have that decision on your friends, your family, as well as your community? I started the business from sort of uh, a lack of spark. I was uh, for formerly, I worked as a manager at the uh, Food and Drug Administration, um, doing a lot of PowerPoints, a lot of meetings, a lot of Excel. Um, and um, I just sort of lost my, my spark for that and decided, um, just took a, a step back and said, what brings me joy and I really enjoy entertaining, love having my girlfriends over and crafting cocktails for them and saw what was going on in the cocktail industry and thought um, just how it was evolving and becoming really dy dynamic, same um, way you were seeing like restaurants and just creativity with that. And so I wanted to add a piece to it and played around with a few different ideas and landed on creating uh, dehydrated fruit. Um, and so what continues to inspire me uh, with that business is things I did not even expect or know to be inspirational, like um, being able to hire within my community, uh, hire 
um, individuals who had lost employment due to COVID um, who were in the hospitality industry. And so being able to provide employment to folks in my community, that's been awesome. Uh, just the inspiration that I give even to my children to see the hard, what hard, what, to see what pays off when you apply hard work and dedication. Um, just to see the inspiration that you get from people who hear your story and are just like, I, oh my God, I can't believe you took that leap um, to just pursue something that is joyful. So um, yeah, that's. And to see the fruit of your labor, if I can yeah. say, excuse the pun, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, you know, Amber, I, I really want to ask this, the same question to you because uh, I, I love what you do. I mean, you are, it, and all of you are about helping um, our community in one way or the other. Your particular area, Amber, is, is, is very unique because you help us who do other things to be able to continue to do our work, but to do it in a healthy way. So talk to us about what inspired you to, to, to launch your business. Thanks for asking me that. Um, so I feel tremendous um, gratitude for being able to sit here and talk about um, my practice and um, what inspired me. Um, I'm a military mom and moving here from Texas was quite a culture shock. And um, a part of my purpose and being here was to provide roots in the community for my kids. And being a therapist, I you know, shopped around to other agencies and was like, this is not a good fit. I can probably do this better. Um, and I believed in myself. I um, believed in the quality care that I could provide the community. Um, and um, I got to work. And um, I got a mentor. Um, I followed kind of their path, but there still was something lacking. And, and what I thought that was, was just um, putting people over profit. And so that um, I think creates a quality um, in the services that I provide my, my patients. Um, so yeah. I, I love that answer, people over profit. Mm -hmm. All businesses need to profit. I mean, we've got to keep the lights on. We've got to pay ourselves. You've got you to pay your employees. So I, I want to ask you, Jennifer, what practices, I guess, and policies do you have in place to, to make sure that your business is profitable? Because, again, you are in a very unique space. Not only are you a you're in a, in a business where there are not a lot of people who right. look like you right. being a woman. Right doing that job. Yeah, I mean, and because of that, it has been important, like you said, putting policies and practices in place and, and a lot of what, you know, construction is, is making sure you, you have transparent terms mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the time, you know, in the contracting industry, not a lot of people, you know, not only do the, does the customer not really trust contractors? Because sometimes, as maybe anybody who has gone through a remodel, it's like y you take that <laughs> on and then the the expenses end up being more than what you think, sure. you know? And so I think one of the things is just being super transparent with my customer and having a contract that not only benefits them, but also us in the sense that we have clear payment terms. Um, you know, they know when we're gonna invoice them. They know what progression we're gonna be at um, at every step of the way. And so that not only helps them feel like, you know, we're um, holding up our end of the contract, but also we expect them to also hold up their end, whereas um, we expect payment in, in that orderly fashion. Um, and so that really helps us stay profitable and really be on top of cash flow. Um, and also just, you know, creating really accurate estimates. Even at the beginning of our projects, we like to make sure we have thorough conversations with our customers so that um, we can really gather what those expenses are gonna be and they know what to expect. Same question for you, Adrian, because again, particularly during COVID, right? We know that everybody, no matter what kind of work you did, even I, I, I'm in the news business and so we had to even pivot. So. How, how, did you, how are you making sure that your business stays profitable, especially again over the past few months and in the past couple of years? Uh, so interesting enough, we actually um, flourished during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine. <laughs> 
Oh, yes, so, that's right. I wish I had known. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it just just so happened that we had launched launched uh, some of our products on Amazon right before COVID hit, mm -hmm. and everyone turned to buying online. That's right. Uh, and so. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, it, it was it was actually really good for us, which again allowed me us to do the hiring that we, that we did um, during COVID. Uh, but that was related to just sort of um, making sure that you're exploring a variety of avenues mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, sources of income, right? So we were relying on selling to bars and restaurants but they weren't buying during COVID, as we all understand. And so it, we needed to make sure that we were on a variety of platforms to get revenue from a variety of streams. Yeah. I, I don't wanna leave you out, out of that, that, that question though, Amber, because again, you said making sure that you put people over profit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how do you do that? I mean, how do you make sure that again, at the end of the day, you still have to get paid. You provide a service, you need to get paid. That's right. And people need to understand the value of your worth. Um, how do you do that? How do you make sure you're, you're keeping the lights on? Yeah, well, again, um, the, there's a lot of silver lining with the pandemic, um, you know, and behavioral health also was able to kind of do that pivot that, um, revamping of what it means to provide direct services, right? And so um, we also profited during COVID and um, I was able to hire two contractors and they both worked virtually. We never saw each other. We were never in person, right? And so providing, um, you know, a, you know, diversifying the way that we provide direct services also gives people um, the, I guess, permission, right, to mm -hmm. access behavioral health services, right, sure. because they don't have to come in person. They can mm -hmm. be, they can be at home. They can be in their car. They can be, you know, during COVID, I, I did take some sessions in people's closets because that was the <laughs> only place they could find, like, quiet, um, space. quiet space. Yeah. So, so I think that, um, again, being able to be flexible and giving people the option to come into person or to use their device um, to access services. Yeah. COVID certainly has taught just about all of us everything over the past couple of years. I, I want to switch gears just a little bit and get each of you to answer this question, if you will. Please articulate your business vision with our audience of women entrepreneurs. How do you want your vision to to impact their their journeys and, and and we'll start with you jennifer yeah well i mean i think uh one of the first things that i ever read when i was uh doing research into contracting and and really immersing myself in the field so that i can provide the best service was create a vision you know you have to have a vision so that you know where you're going and then when you have a team they'll know where 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 to go as well and and so i remember um I, my vision was, and it still continues to be, to foster a family of employees who are happy and healthy and love what they do so that we can service our customers in the same way and, and have our customers kind of reciprocate that energy of loving what we're providing for them. So that's, that's, that's been our vision from, from the beginning to not only inc you know, include the vision of what I desire for the company, but also that my people are taken care of and that, and that we can take, uh, take care of our customers in that same way. Yeah. I just want to remind our audience uh, that everyone has the ability to, to ask a question. I don't want to just hog up all the time here. So I want to uh, remind you that you do have the opportunity to ask a question in Zoom's Q&A webinar. We'd love to know what questions you'd like to ask our panel. So please get started and and, and, and get them going. But let's uh, con continue with our, our, our last question and, and I'll go to, to, to you, Amber, on that one. What what's vision do you want? Oh, the vision, thank the you vision. for... Um, so so we, we have four main points in, our, um, in providing care and that's care, right? Reliability, sincerity, and competency. Um, having you know, a license, right? I'm a licensed clinical professional therapist. Um, there's also a level of competency that you have to have, right? And that level of competency also creates a level of trust, right? 
And um, every single person that I hire as a contractor also has to demonstrate that level of competency. And I think that that, um, that also creates the word, right? People, people will, refer, will refer other people to, um, to places that they feel taken care of, right? And that also goes in with our vision, care, reliability, and sincerity, and competency. Yeah. And that networking has got to be especially important in the word of mouth and mm -hmm. the ability to be able to grow your company has to be extremely important to, to all of you ladies. Uh, Adrian, talk to us a, the, about your vision for, for your company and what you want the women out here, particularly women entrepreneurs, uh, to, to, to know. So, um, you know, our vision is to, to, to relish quality drinks, meaning that you 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 care you and you want to make sure that what you're serving and entertaining to folks is of quality um, and we wanted to do that in an easy way and so for us it's adding that little flair to your cocktail that little that garnish that that creates a beautiful aroma that makes it look good like you're just adding that little special touch and um and it, it doesn't take much right, to put on a little lip gloss or <laughs> that sort of thing. And so, you know, I know it kind of sounds idealistic or, you know, a little grand, but, you know, I want, you know, others to think of that in all aspects of their life. How can I just add that little touch and show the people that I love, you know, how much I, I care? Yeah. And I, I mean, I think that's extremely important, and as you just said, right. in that's everything right. that we do, particularly for women, particularly for black and brown women, because mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, again, we're so busy doing everything for everybody else that's and right. trying mm -hmm. to take care of this and take care of that. You guys are running businesses, mm -hmm. you have families and children. Uh, we don't take the time to get that little extra something for ourselves yeah. and I, I want you real quickly for us Amber to, to just kind of talk a bit about that particularly for the women who are watching now and want to start their own businesses about the importance of that self-care in the midst of whatever you're trying to do. I think the most important part about self-care is listening to yourself right listening to yourself and especially when um, when you start to notice more agitation you know, that's, that's, um, those are signs of, de you know, deprivation when you're starting to notice that you're getting a little bit more cranky and, <laughs> and whatnot. And, um, I and think I think we can all not. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, but, and that's why, and that's why I think with, with getting, with being able to have this opportunity to have my own practice, to have this building that I get to create a safe place for people to come in and feel special. Right. Not only just women, but men and and children. Right. We're going to have in our practice in the building, we're going to have like an area for for children to, to play, you know, in case women want to come with their kids or fathers want to come with their kids and they need a place for their kids to hang out while they're getting services. So that's another that's another aspect of thinking about who you're serving. Right. And making sure that when they come, they feel not only special, but taken care of. So. That's yeah. good. I mean, I, I love that because sometimes you're like, I don't have a babysitter, so I yeah. can't do that. Mm, you got a babysitter That's to take right. care of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right. As yeah. women in business, I think we actually, like, it's, it's beautiful that we think of that. And then That's maybe, right. you know, right. our male counterparts sometimes might not because, you know, we're the ones taking care of, of, of the yeah. kids, right? So, yeah. It's That's great. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about managing the rest, because, I mean, I know that you ladies have heard it. What is it? Forty percent, 50 percent of all businesses fail in the first five to seven years. Yeah. How, how do you uh, deal with that, first of all? And how would you advise women entrepreneurs out there to kind of work through those risky moments? Anybody can start with that. I think strategy is so important yeah. because I think that um, if you're planning, I think that was one of the first statistics that, you know, really came to mind when I was starting and I didn't want to be one of those statistics. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it past year five and thankfully we're 
going into year seven now. Mm. So, Congratulations. Yeah, and I think that was, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah and totally. That was a huge milestone. Like when yeah. I reached five, and, and that's not a guarantee. You know, right. you, you reach year five, you, you, you ease up. No, like you have to always be mindful, always mm-hmm. keep updating that business plan, always, you know, strategize and, and stay with the times so that you can not only compete um, in today's economy, but also thrive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's like paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with avoiding risk, there's risk in everything, right? And so there's um, no pain. There's pain and struggle when um, you're trying to grow, right? But I think a part of risk is, you know, knowing what you want, setting realistic goals, right? And being able to pivot and reset. You know, you're not always going to get your goal the first time, right? Like this was a long process, like getting the SBA loan. And there were many times where it was just like, is this, is this worth it, right? Yeah. But you, you have to be persistent and it's not gonna be easy and you have to be patient and you have to um, just believe in yourself because no one's gonna believe in your vision more than you. Absolutely. So. Yeah, I mean, at, we've all sort of talked about sort of being risk aware, paying attention, um, listening to your customers, uh, not thinking that you know everything, right? That's right. <laughs> it's my no, business. I don't know everything, but yeah, just listening and being aware, watching all sorts of, um, watching where the industry is going, where trends are going, um, and then uh, managing risk so that you're, um, being a product-based business, we can test things before they go out, right? I had a cu- couple customers say to me, that they wanted dried cucumbers, and I'm like, well, how's that going to work? And but, you know, we, we can test it. We can start with a small batch rather than, you know, ordering this huge quantity of mm. cucumbers. We can start small, um, have some trusted people, test them out. Um, and so it's, you know, it's managing that risk um, and, and being aware. So. And having people to tell you the truth is like, yeah. Yeah. Well, that does the right yeah. people. So good, right? <laughs> I like what you said about like, like not knowing everything, right? Mm-hmm. Like you've got to be able to ask questions and then ask what should I be asking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what question should I be asking that yeah. I'm not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. I want to go to the next question, if I can. How important is your business plan to you and your team, and how do you use it as a tool to carry out your operations and financial strategies? Because again, as we said, pivot. So sometimes you have that plan, because as they say, if, if you fail the plan, you plan to fail, but then sometimes you got to pivot with the plan. So mm-hmm. how do you deal with the plan and the pivoting mm-hmm. with the plan at the same time, if that makes sense? So that makes sense to you yeah. guys? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I mean, updating that, that business plan. So, you know, we started in the commercial space and then we, you know, to manage those risks, we wanted to go into the residential space, but also because, you know, we, I started really having an affinity for interior design. So I really wanted to work with clients that would allow me to do that. But then I had to go into my business plan and really make those projections for that side of the business now. So, um, and then not only that, using that business plan to uh, make sure my team was on board and knew our vision as well so that we can service our client um, better. And so now with um, FSC First, we were able to uh, acquire a building so that we can now have our showroom. Uh, and so now I've been working on fin- financial projections and, and updating that business plan once again. And so it's kind of just keeping that updated. And I would recommend uh, women entrepreneurs really consider updating that every six months because that's how often in this uh, economy plans change and, and you have to really research and, and update that plan always to stay on top of things. I, I mean, I, th- I think that's critical what you said, because again, I think sometimes we get so rigid mm-hmm. in what we said that we wanted to do. And then, you know, life happens. And mm-hmm. Danbra, I know you can speak to this better yeah. than anybody. Life happens and you you have to adjust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So t- talk about making sure that you do adjust when the the plan that you had may not be working. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's about paying attention, you know, mm-hmm. like something that Jen said, um, just paying attention to what is going well, mm-hmm. right? Checking in with your staff, having that relationship where you're, you're approachable with your staff, where your staff can come to you and say, hey, this isn't working well, mm-hmm. um, and trusting them and them trusting you, building that mm-hmm. relationship where it's a collaborative communal synergy, right? And so I, I like these three questions, like, what do we like? What do we want to continue to do? What do we want to stop doing? And what, what do we want to do better? 
and what do we like what we're doing you know so it's so it's like so you're doing that appraisal in real time does that make sense it makes sense you want to yeah. add to that adrian well it's it's funny because um my you know you, you first write your business plan you and you write it for yourself, but often sometimes it's written for another audience, like mm. like like um, if, if you're going for a loan or whoever it is that you need to communicate the status of your business or where, where you're headed. Um, and so we have sort of um, short shorter term goals that we monitor on a more regular basis. Um, but when I was going through the loan process with FSC, you know, went back to that that business plan, and um, it needs to, of course, have guideposts. Mm -hmm. And um, like I, I mentioned earlier, relish quality drinks. So it was all about making sure that we create um, help our customers create easy quality cocktails. But in in that original business plan, I had competitors listed there who I thought originally would, were going to be competitors for me. But as I pivoted the business, um, we now are actually, in, strangely enough, in conversations right now to actually supply those people who I thought were going to be competitors for me. Ooh, um, that's great. But it's like, it's, it's interesting because as long as I had those, that guidepost of, you know, whatever, what can I do to... Um, enhance this industry to create a quality product and and people who I admire companies that I admire are now looking to me for that so I don't know it's that's what all is um, so the business plan is I think a very important document to, have to provide you that those guide rails absolutely yeah. that's scaffolding yeah, yeah. absolutely uh, I want to remind the audience again if you have not already done so please submit any questions you may have for the panelists in the Q&A window. Before we dive into our audience's questions though, I want to invite Lisa Smith, Executive Director of the Bowie BIC, to say a few words for us this evening. And we are so delighted to, to have her with us. How are you? Thank you so much, Renee. Um, Bowie BIC is really delighted to partner with FSC, FSC First through its Level Up program, and to help this, to host this really lively panel uh, with some impressive business women. Our business accelerator is located here at the new Entrepreneurship Living Learning Community on the campus of Bowie State University. But Bowie Bic is more than a place. We're a growing, inclusive community and a network of business relationships which provide access to the specific mentoring and technical business advice that accelerates small business growth. We also lease office and meeting space to our client companies on flexible terms. We're an award-winning business accelerator program with the largest concentration of business scale-up resources in Prince George's County, including the county's only women's business center counselor and America's first 8A accelerator program for federal contractors. Our resources help women-owned businesses, technology companies, government contractors, and other high growth businesses scale up and thrive. And that is our mission, to accelerate company growth, innovation, and job generation in Prince George's County. But enough about us. We invite all of you to come have coffee at Bowie Bic. We want to learn more about your businesses and your challenges. We want to discuss how Bowie Bic and our community can help you grow your business. Our contact details are in the chat box. Please drop us a note. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lisa, for that great information. And I want to invite our listeners and viewers to welcome back. Once again, I'm Renee Nash, hosting FSC's first powerful beyond measure made possible by the Bowie Business Innovation Center and FSC. The Bowie BIC is an empowering organization, as you just heard. Once again, we thank them for their partnership in this wonderful event this evening. Once again, I'm joined by a panel of women business owners, and I want to reintroduce them to you. First up, Adrian Walker, owner and operator of Blue Henry, a certified women's business on, uh, enterprise, excuse me. Amber Flynn, Amber is the owner of Healing Practice Counseling, and Jennifer Ramos, owner and chief executive officer of Gen Contract 
connecting group. We have another poll question for you before we move into the audience question. And as entrepreneurs and self-starters, you have many priorities to juggle. What is most important to women entrepreneurs? Is it developing leadership, financial and management skills, access to accounting, financial management systems and tools, creating work-life balance, that's a tough one, as part of a business culture, hiring individuals who contribute to the growth of the business, having access to coaches and mentors or budgeting for things like legal, accounting, marketing, and expenses. Thank you for taking the time to respond to our poll. With that, we're gonna to go to our first audience question. And the first question is, did you have a hard time hiring and retaining employees during the pandemic as well as now? During the pandemic, it was it was it was difficult because yeah. you know there was not only policies that would would have to be followed to keep our employees safe, but also you know adapting into this virtual world and 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 recruiting and, and having to do virtual interviews where when you sit down with someone you can really you know get a feel for them, have a conversation, and um, and so it's kind of more difficult to do that through a screen, and so it was adjusting to that um, and 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 really making sure that who we did bring on really fit um, our company culture, really ha shared our same beliefs and um, could really help us grow. So it was difficult, but um, luckily luckily we were able to hire, actually I hired um, one of my first employees uh, during that time. And so um, it was kind of a, a blessing because um, she was also a working mom where, where it actually benefited for her to be remote during that time and we were able to make that work, so. Mm -hmm. Amber, I, I heard you say earlier that you, in fact, did hire uh, a staff during that time. Yeah. yeah. Um, during COVID, I was able to hire two contractors and um, able to help one launch their own practice, which uh, is um, a source of pride for myself because um, that's, that's a part of um, what I get to do as an entrepreneur and, and a leader in my field is also help other um, therapists who want to jumpstart their own practice and who want guidance and support and want someone to help walk them through what it looks like. Um, so yeah, um, it, it's it's definitely a unique um, opportunity because the two contracts that, that I had, you know, we didn't have an office space. You know, they just were able to use their technology and see patients um, via Zoom. So, yeah. And Adrian, you said also earlier that your business actually flourished yes. in the midst of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I also want to say it's always hard to hire, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, it doesn't matter. Hire when. and retain. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and particularly, I think, when you're an entrepreneur and it's sort of your baby and it's when you're doing something that's crafted, you want people to do it um, to the a high level of quality. Uh, but, um, and, and so, so that's hard to sort of let go and, and let loose. Um, but um, yeah, we were able to uh, hire. Um, we were hiring from it within an industry that had laid off a lot of employees. So it wasn't difficult in terms of uh, uh, getting uh, applicants. Uh, but was what was difficult was was for me, you know, finding that that good fit and someone who had the same level d desire to excel that that and I, the passion I have. Yeah, that you yes, have for yeah. your baby, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would imagine that is difficult. <laughs> I want to ask also. This is another question from our audience. Do you have a coach or a mentor um, to help you grow your business? And what is the best advice that they have given to you? When I first started in, in construction as a woman, I, I um, had the best advice from another woman, which is um, when you get to the top, don't forget to lift others up. Mm -hmm. And so now a big, uh, one of my biggest pillars is to uh, not only educate women about the opportunities in construction, but also bring more women into the field because it's, it's, it, it can be a very good option for anybody, really, it's it's you know there's a lot of uh, money allocated by not only governments but um, there's a lot of money in construction, and so um, 
and, and women can, you know, women can. You can immerse yourself into anything and learn. And if you really put your mind to it, um, you can. And so I'm always, and, and so that also goes back to hiring. It's hard to find women to hire that want to come into construction. So if anybody knows anybody, send them my way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, that's been, that's been uh, really important. What's, what's the, the, the best advice and, that you've been given? And, and, and do you have a, a coach or a mentor? Um, I, I did in moving to um, <clears throat> Maryland. I did um, work with someone who um, took me under their wing and helped me start my practice. And um, then I needed to kind of expand and, and grow myself. Um, it, and I started looking towards myself to provide that, um, that structure and stability that um, I think that I was conditioned to think I needed in an institution. Um, Cause I think as a therapist, uh, you know, you're not really encouraged to, you know, in my graduate program, you really weren't taught to, to be your own business or to provide quality services um, for yourself. You're taught to just, you know, be hired by an institution. And um, so I think, I think giving myself permission to to have my own private practice was, um, but then also seeing someone else do it was also helpful. And I think the advice that really helped me was, um, you know, going back to hosting and making people feel special. Um, it's, it's about hosting. People really don't care about what you say. Sometimes they care more about how you make them feel, yeah. right? Do, do they feel cared for? Mm -hmm. And are you competent, you know? And so, yeah. I think that's that that's spot on right there. <laughs> what what about you, Adrian? What's the best advice you've been given and, and, and have you uh had access to a coach or, or a mentor? So when I first started, I did have a formal mentor who, who I hired and we would meet monthly um and go over um uh, performance. Um, you know, she she was very good at keeping me, you said you were gonna do this, did right. you do these things, right? Um, and just keep me encouraged because when, when you start, it's a slow start, right? It, mm -hmm. It's a little scary, it's, it's actually, it's a very scary <laughs> um, how slow that start can be. Um, and so that was very helpful, but if, I also have informal mentors like my mother and uh, mm -hmm. you know, personal friends who are just great cheerleaders and that sort of thing. And from them, it may sound contradictory, but the, the best advice I get from my mother is the worst thing they can say is no, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then I have another friend who says, don't take no for an answer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which, <laughs> that's kind of right, that's right. <laughs> right. But I think, I think right. the, the big thing about that is just keep at it, you yes. know? Yes. So, um, yeah. That's right, so, I love it. I love it. So here's a, another question from our audience. When starting a business, how important is it to have access to capital? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would imagine that is pretty crucial. Well, I think in my case, um, because I didn't have an office, I wasn't paying rent. And I think that that, um, you know, contributed to my ability to um, grow capital. In addition, you know, we were able to get the PPP loan, but also I really think what was pivotal in this process was the SBA loan and its and the ability to um, have such a great interest rate and the um, the guidance that we got from the banks, um, particularly FSC first with um, going this route with the SBA loan um, because we were able to do an equity injection and then that equity injection we're using for the renovations of my property, which if, if I had gone with the commercial, a regular traditional commercial loan, um, that would not have been the case. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, I get it. What, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur who is not quite bankable, but actually needs the capital? I would say start small. You know, I think that um, 
there's a benefit to that. I, I know that, you know, when we're starting a business, we have these grand goals, mm -hmm. um, but there is something to be said for starting small and working your way up. So, you know, as a construction company, you, all, you often need a lot of capital to put into not only hiring a team to complete these construction um, projects, but we started with $3,000. We literally just uh, did a small pantry build out in a kitchen. We were recommended by that one customer because we we have we, we set a standard of excellence for our services, and now that's how we grow. We we just it's word of mouth, and it's mm -hmm. really it's really just there's something to be said about starting small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what do you say? Yeah, um, you can. It's super easy to do that as, as a product based company. There's so many platforms out there now where you can start small, like an Etsy or something like that. Mm -hmm where you can test out products. That's that's literally how I, I did it. You know, you you can put a product product out there one day for, and take it down the next, right? <laughs> you can say you've got, you can manage your inventory very easily that people aren't over ordering more than you have the supply to, to give. Mm. Um, and so it is, um, there are many platforms like that that make it easy for you to start small uh, tests before you invest too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I would imagine having FSC alongside guiding you through the process is, was extremely important for you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, as women in business, it's hard to access funding. And so it's important to have partners like FSC that not only like look at your finances and your cash flow, but they look at management and, and they place a heavy, um, factor in, in consideration on if management is competent, if, if you're somebody who has a vision for your company. Um, the, the person, Eddie Tuvin, who I worked with at FSC, he, he really um, saw our vision. He saw that, you know, we're passionate, we have a plan of growth, and he really was just such a such an um, advocate for us mm -hmm. to, to, to get the loan. And, and mm -hmm. so it's really, it, it's possible if you partner with, with community, like, uh, organizations that really want to uplift um, not only wi women in business but um, minority women in business. So FSC first was so instrumental. So thankful for yeah. FSC. Mm -hmm. You you wanted to add to that, Amber? Oh yeah, I, I can't speak any more highly of Eddie Truven and the team. Um, it, it, you know, like it was it was scary. You know, I mean, I'm a therapist. I'm not. This isn't my wheelhouse, right? I don't right. speak banker language. Right. <laughs> Right, so I had to I had to like come up with some language where right. I could communicate, you know, what was going on with me, and I and I likened it to a, a football game. I'm like Eddie, you know, this is, I feel like I'm Phil Jackson here, or, or I don't know the play, you know, I need Phil Jackson. Are you by Phil Jackson, you know? And he was like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm out there, you know. I'm like, okay, well, like help me, because you know I'm feeling like people don't have the play. Um, so it was, it was coming up with the language that I could use to help communicate and build those relationships. And yeah, yeah, so. And having that level of advocacy at, at, from FSC, I mean, that's just, I would imagine, because it, again, as you just said, I tell people all the time, I, it, and I used to host a financial show, right? And I would say all the time, because I hosted with, a, with a, a, a person who was a banker, I say, I do radio, you do money, right? Mm -hmm. So. I can basically say what I need, what I want, but I need you to put it in the language and speak the lingo, as you as you just said, Amber. In having FSC, as you said, is is kind of important just to kind of guide you through that process, right? Yeah. All right. So, the next question is: Where do the panelists have health insurance through? What what companies do you have? Do you have? SEPs and IRAs? Do you have financial advisors? I think that's important because, again, obviously health insurance for entrepreneurs can be expensive and tricky and share your, your process through that. And it's something you got to have, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we, we uh, it's really, it was, it came down to our network, you know, with my accountant, the accountant that I sought out, I wanted them to be very knowledgeable and be able to guide me as well. And so they were able to connect me with insurance providers um, and, and through uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield is what we uh, use currently. But it, I would have never found the avenue to get there without my accountant kind of guiding me. So it's so important to develop a good network that um, shares resources with you. And so even, you know, meeting other uh, business owners that can share what they've done is so important as well. So. Mm -hmm. 
how do you have influ or how have you, I should say, how have you influenced entrepreneurs uh, in, in your own neighborhood? Mm, I yeah. like this question. Yeah. Um, so my private practice is in uh, Tacoma Park and um, I really love Tacoma Park. It's just such a, a, a great it's a, community. It's a community. It really yeah. Is. yeah. Um, and so I've been able to network with other providers in my community and we um, we want to build a you know a, a small town you know provider kind of neighborhood right um, that kind of service where you know you're walking down the street and you see your therapist or you see your doctor and it's just like hi you know um, but it's it's creating that relationship um, in your community and um, yeah I think it's yeah we, my kids go to school in Tacoma Park I work in Tacoma Park um, I live in Tacoma Park. Um, my money stays in Tacoma Park. I, you know, nice. go to the restaurants there. So um, I think that's I, I think that's what um, also aligns with my vision too. Anybody else want to answer? Oh goodness! Um, I just think about all of the entrepreneurs that influence me. <laughs> you know, I hope I'm giving something back to them too as well. I mean, you. Along this journey, I've met some really inspiring women, and um, we just we just keep in contact. And um, you know, when we're frustrated, we've got somebody to call. Uh, when uh, we have joy, you know, a joyous moment to share, we we have someone to share that with too. Um, I would also encourage uh, entrepreneurs to look at programs. Um, there's. Um, many, many sort of accelerators or, or programs like that, uh, like the ones that were des described earlier, where you can network and meet other female entrepreneurs um, and um, just have someone to counsel with. So, yeah. Let's talk about your greatest business success and how did you share that success through, I guess, marketing efforts? And I'm going to start back here with, with you, Adrian. What's, what's been your greatest business success? And, and how did you share that oh. through marketing efforts? So since I, I, I will admittedly say that marketing is not my, my strong, strongest suit. I don't do a good enough job celebrating and sharing um, sharing the growth of the business with my customer base, uh, I, I need to do a, a better job um, at that. I, maybe it's that's a personal thing too that I, I don't... You don't I, want to brag about yourself? I don't, <laughs> I, I don't do that enough. Yeah, um, you have to but, applaud yourself. But, um, you know, I think that's a thing... Amber which, can help you with that. Yeah, <laughs> with, yes, I need, I need some therapy. Um, so. Um, but no, I think social media is has become a wonderful tool for people yeah. to be able to do that. And I watch other companies grow, and I watch the the founders talk about their growth and their successes. Um, I I'm looking forward to being able to. One of the um, we went to get the FSC loan in order to be able to expand into a larger facility, and so hopefully. When, um, as we make that journey, I'll do a better job of promoting that on on We're gonna social hold you and to, marketing. We're going to hold that you to that. We're going <laughs> to hold, my hold customer you to base. that. What's anybody else want to answer that? Well, um, I'm, you know, working with someone that um, is documenting the process, okay. um, and luckily, my husband made me at the signing at the title company take a picture. So I am grateful to him for that. Otherwise, I would not have. And I think that's, I think that's also um, what we're, we'll use, and uh, you know, on our IG account to market the um, the progression and the journey of yeah. this endeavor. And you got to do that because again, that's another way of letting people yeah. know that you're that you're out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. And I, I know you have to do it, right? Yeah. Do you do oh, it? Yeah. On a regular basis. Yeah. I mean, I'm in the media, so I'm just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, well, we yeah we document everything because that's that's our portfolio on our right. end. Like if you go at Gen Contracting on any social media you platform, fifty million pictures. Yeah, we have pictures of our projects, right. everything because that's what our customers. That's how they can see our product. Yeah, because I want to see the before yeah, and exactly. I need to see yeah. the after. That's and right. it's been staying up to 
date with the trends. So like, you know, your TikToks, your reels, like that was something new for us, but it's about becoming, staying creative with that as well. Yeah, so. and those testimonials mm -hmm. on, exactly. I mean, both of you guys testimonials yeah all of that and mm -hmm. i'm like i'm like with adrian like that's not my wheelhouse so it's it's like finding finding the person to help you with that yeah. and yeah. i think yeah. that's that's what i've had to do because like um that's not my wheelhouse mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. all right here's another question from our audience how do you manage your revenue and work toward profitability because the money is coming in how, how do you manage that i mean you don't go back go out and just buy yourself a big Mercedes like that, right? <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. Like it's been about uh, reinvesting in, 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 in the business. Like mm -hmm. I know we can all probably speak to that. The, the reason we're able to like even be in business is, is, is because we reinvest yeah. and um, spend money wisely and, and really keep track of that. You know, I mean, I use QuickBooks, but there's so many different um, platforms that you can use to track your expenses, track your income and, and um, so it's been so important to just diversify our business and be have have our hands in a lot of cookie jars. So right. Say. That's yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's another question: What was your biggest startup hurdle? What was the biggest obstacle you had to to, to deal with as you were trying to to get off the ground? I, I think it's twofold. It's like the 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 first the first launch. <laughs> Um, was just that transition that that um, that just breaking out from being um, in that mentee mm. um, place. But now, um, having had my own practice, but then having to shut it down due to COVID, and then relaunching now, it, it's about patience. Like I've, I've had to learn how to pace myself, how to um, kind of, you know project manage. I feel like I'm project managing this yeah. relaunch of mm -hmm. um, healing practice counseling. And um, the biggest hurdle, I think, is just being patient, you know, and um, trusting the stakeholders that are in support of my relaunch. Right. So. Gosh, um, I think biggest hurdle. So, with, you know, in my prior career, I had a team, right? I worked for the federal government. So you had a whole group who was responsible for contracting, a whole group who was responsible right. for human resources, all, you know, you could just pick up the phone and, and get whatever resource you needed. And you could trust in that to a certain degree. And um, so I think that was a big hurdle, realizing that it all fell on me, mm. you know? There's no one to call, no IT support to call, <laughs> right? When your computer isn't working, right. honey. honey. Right? <laughs> um, and so then you're just like, okay, it's all on me. And but then you have to lift up again and say, it can't all be on me, mm -hmm. actually, right? So I'm, I'm gonna have to hire a team and trust in other people. So maybe it was that. That was, that was huge. Yeah. I think that's big mm -hmm. because that brings us to our next question and I think you kind of answered it a little bit. How do you build a dream team that performs to meet the CEO's expectations? Mm. Yeah. Because again, this is your baby, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you birthed it, you carried it, you rocked it, and you're just trying to get somebody to see your vision, mm -hmm. carry through your vision, yeah. and make sure that vision and the baby grows and thrives. Yeah. I think it's really about doing good onto others. Like if you yes. do good onto your team, I think that that prompts them wanting to be there for you as well. So uh, it's really just also showing them um, that that's the same philosophy that we treat our customers with, do good mm -hmm. onto them as well. Because just if you, I'm such a big believer, if you put out good, good will come back to you. And I really think that's how we've grown. So I think it's just um, really kind of show who you are to your to your employees, mm -hmm. and 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 your tribe will follow and and, and build that way. Yeah. That's yeah. a great point. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, something you mentioned before, patience, right? So you take your time to find the right people. Um, sometimes it may take a while for to find that perfect resource to help you with operations or that perfect resource to help you with, um, you know, graphic design, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, just just be patient to find the, the right person because they're coming. 
Yeah. They are. Yeah, I like what you said about, um, well, in, in that question, the, the, what stuck out to me was expectation, right? Mm -hmm. And expectation is so fraught, right? Because it's not clear. So you've got to be able to, you know, parse that out. What is the expectation here? And how do I articulate, you know, what my expectation is? Because with expectation, Brene Brown talks about expectation in her new book, um, Atlas of the Heart. And she describes that we have parts of us that make up a story. We make up this picture about um, what we want things to look like. And so we've got to be able to articulate what that picture is, who's doing what in that picture, and why is this important to me, Yeah. right? And so I think it's, it, I think it's communicating to your staff why it's important to me that we do it this way, mm -hmm. you know, and this is the outcome that I'm hoping for if we do it this way. What are, what are your thoughts? Yeah. And so it's a team to like, mm -hmm. I guess, actualize what everyone's expectations are, you know, and, and to, you know, create that atmosphere where everyone's yeah. talking about it. Yeah. 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 That, that communication is definitely a key mm -hmm. yeah. and being able to communicate what you're looking for, what you want. Yeah. We all know it's, e it's easier said than done. Right. <laughs> it's easier said than done, yeah. right? Yeah. So don't, don't, that be takes me... don't, don't be disheartened. Right. 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 Turn out that way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the last question, but before we finish, we would like to let everyone know that a recording of this event will be available online in a few days. So last question, can I get each panelist to provide their website, any social media platforms, or a way that we can contact you? Then we'll start with you first, Age. Uh, you can find us, bluehenry.com, uh, and you can also find us on Amazon, just search for dehydrated fruit. Uh, on Instagram, we are at bluehenry. And so look forward to hearing from the folks. Absolutely. There. Amber? So um, you can find me on Psychology Today. Um, just, you know, put in Amber Flynn um, and my um, profile will, will pop up. I'm also not on IG yet, but I am working on that. Um, and you can um, look me up on my website, healingpracticecounseling.net. Great. You can, Jennifer? Yeah, you guys can find me on any social media platform, Instagram at Gen Contracting, also same for TikTok and uh, Facebook. Um, a Gen Contracting search will pop some stuff up for you and uh, our website is www.gencontracting.com. Absolutely. Well, unfortunately, that is our last question. I wanna thank our audience uh, for all of your questions. We, we didn't have time to take each and every one of them, but we thank you so much for joining us. You have been a fantastic audience and have provided some thought-provoking questions. And now I will have to hand it back over to Shelley Gross Wade for closing remarks. And again, we thank you so much. Thank you, Renee. What a dynamic panel we've had this evening. Thank you all for joining us for the Women History Month platform that we presented today. I've enjoyed listening to our panel's perspectives and hope you all did as well. If you could, please respond to this final poll question regarding your experience this evening. Please rate the benefit of entrepreneurial roundtable discussions to business leaders. Rate one, not very, or five, extremely beneficial. How often would you attend such discussions? Monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually? And thank you to everyone who responded to our poll. This feedback will help shape our approach to future events. Looking ahead, I think we all can agree that we are so much better together. The next steps aren't achieved in isolation, but by working collaboratively. At FSC First, we want to meet you where you are and help you write the next chapter in your story. We hope our program has given you the tools to plan, the obstacles to anticipate, and the inspiration to move forward. Always remember that you're powerful beyond measure. We would like once again to thank all of our panelists for their insights, the Bowie Big for their partnership, the FSC First Board and direct, Board of Directors and staff, and all committee members and volunteers that made this event possible. Thanks everyone for participating. We appreciate your continued support of FSC First and the Bowie Big. 
Finally, many thanks to our Anchor Level Up program sponsors, including City Foundation and PNC Foundation. Stay tuned for our next Level Up offering. And in closing, let me just say that FSC First is available to assist you in realizing your business dream. We provide innovative and creative business financing solutions, one loan at a time. Thank you and good night.